Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So whenever I have a problem like this, two sine squared of theta minus three sine of theta plus one, I automatically see that sine squared or cosine squared or secant squared or whatever it is squared. I automatically think I need to be applied the, um, more than likely, uh, I need to go ahead and apply you know, some type of factor in and so forth, especially when there's multiple sine terms. Other than that, I can use the square root method. So here I have the sine squared and the sine. I'm like, all right, I know I'm going to have to factor. So immediately what I like to do is forget about factoring with sine and just factor with your variables. So I have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. All right, and I just want, eh, let's set it equal to 0. Just need to factor this, right? If I have this equation, I said solve, you'd have to know how to factor it. So what I need to do, factoring is setting up a product of two factors. All right, now remember the product two factors have to multiply to 2x. So that's easy, 2x and x. And they also have to multiply to 1. And, um, or the, and then the other factor has to, has to multiply to positive 1. So that could be 1 and 1, or negative 1 and negative 1. So I just need to determine, well, since my middle term is negative, I know that these two terms have to also both be negative 1. And let's just double check this. Right? We can always check, double check factoring by FOIL. 2x times x is 2x squared. Yep. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, right? And then these two, multiplied and added together, is going to produce negative 3x. Negative 1 times x is negative x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative x plus negative 2x is negative 3x. Sweet. So now all I'm simply going to do is replace x with sine squared of theta. OK, so now that I have a product of factors equal to 0, I can now apply the 0 product property. So therefore, I set these both equal to 0. OK, so now that I have them both set into 0, um, now what I can do is solve for theta. Ah, that's not right. That's not sine squared. That's just sine. Sorry. So I add 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Sine of theta equals 1 half. Over here, I have sine of theta equals 1. OK, so now I, have si I need to find the solutions for when is the sine of an angle equal to 1 half, and when is the sine of an angle equal to 1. So I go back to my unit circle. And again, remember, the sine of any angle is equal to the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. So let's just kind of look at our first four points, or five points. So this is 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, uh, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. OK, so when, when is the y coordinate equal to 1 half? Well, you can see, just moving up. You can see moving up. Oh. Ding, 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 this angle. So what is that first angle in that first quadrant? Well, that angle is theta equals pi over 6. Um, however, we also know that that angle is also available, or there, at 5 pi over 6. Because in the second quadrant, y, the y coordinate is still 1 half. It's just the x coordinate is now negative. So I also have another solution, theta equals 5 pi over 6. And I'll get to finding all the solutions in a second. I'm just going to find all the solutions in the, in the first quadrant first. Now let's determine when is sine of theta equal to 1. Well, sine of theta is equal to 1 right here, which is the angle pi halves. Okay? So these would be all the solutions um, in, the in the first quadrant. Now I want to determine all of the solutions in, um, for all of the solutions. So for each one of these angles, all I need to do to find all the solutions is just keep on adding revolutions of 2 pi. And if I keep on adding 2 pi, I'm going to keep on going back to the, uh, to the original angle, and I'm going to keep on producing solutions. And I can add 2 pi as many times as I want. So rather than just writing 2 pi once, I'm going to use a variable that's going to represent infinite many revolutions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve um, your trigonometric equation. Thanks.